Board Secretary, I call the regular board meeting of May 20th, 2019, the Board of Commissioners meeting here at 6.30 p.m. The uh, Recording Secretary, can I get a roll call, please? Commissioner Beeler. Present. Commissioner Greenfield. Here. Commissioner Lane. Here. Commissioner McKendry. Here. Commissioner Mossbarger. Here. Commissioner Fertilla. Here. Okay, as Board <coughs> Secretary, we need uh, a motion for the appointment of Nikki Walsh to, to fill out the rest of the term. Uh, it's in the packet. Uh, three of the commissioners interviewed and received seven packets, and I think he's been extensively involved with the park district. So, so moved. Second. And Commissioner Tara. So, roll call, please. Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Mossberger? Yes. Commissioner Patera. Yes. Okay. You are official. But now what oh, she she will do is she has to <laughs> read the oath of office. <laughs> should I say it or should I go? You can say it if you okay. want. So. <laughs> I, Nikki Walsh, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Park District Commissioner according to the best of my ability. As a Lake Bluff Park District Commissioner, I further commit to follow the Illinois Association of Park Districts Code of Ethics to represent the interests of all people in my community. I will not favor any particular special interest. Not use my service on this board for my own personal advantage or for the advantage of my friends or supporters. Keep privileged information confidential. Approach all board issues with an open mind, prepared to make the best decisions for everyone involved. Do nothing to violate the trust of those who elected or appointed me to the board or of those we serve. Focus my efforts on the mission of the agency and not on my personal goals. Never exercise authority as a board member except when acting in a meeting with the full board or as I am delegated by the board. Thank you very much. So we have a full oh, board now. So welcome everyone. So yeah, the women are taking over. <laughs> I like this. Five and two. You look so out, men. We're strong. <laughs> so I need a motion for approval of the agenda. We don't have any added items. So Second. So we had Commissioner Mossberger, Commissioner McHenry. Uh, we'll call, please. Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Mossberger? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. So uh, we have a statement of the visitors, and for anyone who is here that uh, would like to speak to something that's not on the agenda, feel free to come up and you can make a statement. So we're going to continue. Uh, we have the business of the 2018-19 board. So this is standard protocol, part of Park District Code, uh, where we close off the business of the previous year. So we need a motion to close off the 2018-2019 board. So Second. Yes, Commissioner Mossberger, Commissioner Henry. Uh, let's see, and we will do, uh, there's no action required. Uh, let's do it all in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Any nays, same sign? None? Motion carries. All right, so now we're calling the, to order the 2019-2020 board. And so, uh, as secretary of the board, I declare the first meeting of the 2019-2020 board now called the order. Can I get a roll call, please? Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Mossberger? Yes. Commissioner Fatira? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Okay, this is the last you'll hear from me related to this agenda. Is that um, it is required that we uh, that the board chooses a president and vice president. And normally, if the vice president was an officer at the time, they would conduct this. But, Board Secretary, I'm allowed to do that since we don't have that right now. So how it will work is I'll be requesting a motion to move that someone be cast for president. Someone will second it. Uh, and then uh, 
then I will ask if there's any other nominations on the floor, and then that will get a second. So if there's no other nominations at that point in time, we'll go straight into a roll call. Does that make sense? Feel free to stop me. We'll just used to doing that. So um, I'm requesting a motion be made. Uh, is there a motion to be made for someone for president? Yes. I nominate Chris Longberg. Okay. And he is second. Second. Okay. Okay. Did you I think it was Commissioner Pacera. Uh, are there any other nominations? Uh, okay, so uh, we will close the nominations and if we can take a roll call of the votes uh, for President Moss Parker in this nomination. Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Mossberger? You get to vote? Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. All right. Congratulations. Let me put the plate. Moving on to BP. Um, I'm going to make a motion that uh, Corey McKendry be cast for vice president. For, for the coming year. Do I need a second round? Is that how it works? Would someone like to make a second? Second. Let me ask if there's any other, any other nominations for vice president. All right, hearing none, uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner yes. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. President Walsh, Yes. All right, Corey, you're in. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you better be you have perfect wow. time. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. On to what, Ron? Uh, we are on to uh, more uh, verbal, uh, oh, uh, sorry, appointment of legal up. Oh. All the appointments. Okay. Anything you need to talk about? Uh, no, we do have uh, Scott Weber, uh, who's in the audience, uh, as will join us as a citizen. For the Which is great. And Scott, you're going to be with uh, Franz on finance, right? Correct. Uh, thank you for volunteering. <coughs> Fantastic. And he'll come up later on, but I just wanted okay. to introduce him and as appointments, that would be a part of it. So then we have the treasurer. Um, uh, as a uh, Franz Patero continue to be treasurer. Uh, what I don't have is an alternate treasurer. Sometimes it's the vice VP, so I wanted to throw that out of the board. To Great idea. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. To continue. <laughs> so it's part of the. How many jobs? For alternate. There's no. Uh, well, can I just. She's got a form after I'm back. I'd like to. Okay, so as part of the motion that would be included that Jennifer would be a part of the, the alternate. And the reason why the alternate is important is if there are any bonds or anything like that that need to be signed and uh, Commissioner Patero is out of the country. Of so, so Franz brings up a good point that um, Paul's actually going to be on the finance committee. So it probably makes sense for Paul. Or it feels that way. That's probably if someone who's on the finance committee, that probably Does everyone in the finance yeah. generally agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Paul. <Yeah. laughs> Sorry, Joe. Uh, so then we just have alternates, and other than that, so when there's a motion that uh, someone can make a motion to uh, to include uh, Commissioner Greenfield as the alternate that would be treasurer, that would be great. So whoever wants to make a motion. I would say Paul Greenfield be as well as all the other appointments. As well as all the other appointments is recommended. Second. 
Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. President Monsbutton? Yes. All right, moving on to the board report. This will be the first time a number of you are seeing this level of detail on things, so definitely raise your hand, pause, ask questions along the way. Um, Franz has done a lot of work already, and, and I know that we've got some goals to still try and refine this a little bit and make it a little more user friendly, so um, recognize that, but definitely ask questions as we go through it. Um, Around staff report first. So I'll just go really quickly. We went through some training on Friday night with all our pool and beach staff, and uh, just a great young group. I always enjoy doing that, so we try to do some skits. And, uh, just very attentive staff, so uh, just a joy to do. Uh, we have a foundation meeting on May 30th, so they're going to start talking about fundraising, and that's important. So you have to connect with John Hirsch on exactly what. So once I get that agenda out, I will let you know um, what we're doing there. Uh, Commissioner, or President Mossbarger and Member Walsh and I are meeting with Golf Visions. We have uh, part of the license agreement to meet quarterly. And so uh, there's some things that uh, be good to go over with them to understand expectations and where we're at and what they're doing. So we're doing that on Thursday. So I'll report, I'll give you a report back on my, during my Friday executive can you send a note to the two of us ahead of the Thursday meeting, the things that you can uh, Absolutely. address? I meet with uh, John Kuznowski uh, tomorrow um, uh, to kind of go over some things that his group has been gathering. So okay. I'll, I'll send that out after I meet with him at 10 o'clock. Great. Great. So that's it for me. Yeah, so I think the, for me there's two major highlights uh, for recreation. Pool and beach, we open this coming weekend. So uh, we've, uh, as Ron stated, we had training this past weekend, well attended. Uh, we're doing more training throughout the week. Uh, I think we're, our biggest uh, preparation is our new check-in process for the beach. Uh, we've worked out the Wi-Fi uh, situation. We've always struggled with Wi-Fi, but we've been down there already once just to give it a try. And we've been talking to local residents that have been walking their dogs down there. And they've all, they're all prepared for this. So as we're talking to them, we remind them, make sure you either get a membership pass if you're gonna come down to the beach or you could bring a government state ID with you. And uh, they're all like, yeah, we've been reading the communication. We've seen so many newsletters. So it seems like everyone hopefully is prepared for that. Uh, we expect uh, really good weather this, this coming week. And Saturday is supposed to be 78 degrees. So hopefully that'll be uh, uh, good for us for both beach and pool. Um, the other thing uh, I just wanted to highlight, we are introducing a new uh, sports program in the fall and that will be, uh, we just hired an archery instructor that will uh, be teaching archery uh, fall and spring. So uh, we're really excited about it. Uh, she's uh, got a couple of certifications and she'll be uh, a new employee of ours. Uh, we're not doing an independent contractor, we're actually going to employ her to do the archery because we're going to use utilize her certifications over the summer for athletic camp. That's, that's all I got. Uh, from my side, facility and park maintenance, uh, as has been mentioned, the, the pools are up and running, the top pools are running great, uh, and IDPH just passed our new ADA flat stairs, which is fantastic, we're really excited about that, so uh, we can have all our guests have access to the pool. Uh, and if you didn't know, today we had sand delivery down at the beach, uh, approximately 200 tons of sand got delivered today, so it's all spread out and the beach looks gorgeous. So we should great shape for opening weekend. Great. So that, that all come about as part of your work with um, Waukee and... Now that's, uh, that's separate. This is our standard uh, uh, $8,000 budget for quarry well, sand. Well, the last two or three years. I, I do have a meeting, I'm glad brought that up, regarding the pilot project with the sand. It's called uh, uh, Project 1122. Uh, it's not supposed to occur until 2021, but uh, we're getting a lot of questions. And so, uh, at least I am from residents on what kind of sand is this? What's it all about? So I think uh, we'll have to hold some public hearings to talk about it. But it is a little bit different. 
All right, that's our report. Uh, committee reports. Bronze, do you want to kick it off? Any updates from, from your group? To be honest, it's a little bit boring. Um, we did meet for a couple of hours, and we met with um, Bob Nowak as well. Charlie's in the room, um, and you know, Ronald's there. But we mostly discussed new financial reporting for the board and for the committee and what that might look like. Just to help improve what we get as board members and just make it just a little bit easier to understand how we're doing um, and then see some granularity. Um, so we, pr we discussed you know, some a framework in terms of you know, what we would like to see. It's our first proposal and I think Ron and Bob are gonna start working on that and I think we're expecting kind of the first draft maybe at the committee level in June or July, something like that. So they're working on seeing what information can easily be pulled and how, you know, through the systems and automated so that it's a lot less manual work, but still provides us with, you know, good monthly, you know, annual versus budget, you know, versus prior year type reports. So that's what we're working on. Um, how many hours a week do we have them? We have them two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. The, uh, before I forget, the audit should be just about done. So that will be coming, that will be presented in June. So we'll come to the finance committee first. Okay. Parks and Beach. You guys want to Can I Sure. Okay. So we met last week um, at Almond Park. And we are going to be doing some upgrading of some of the equipment. Some of the equipment's older than other pieces. So I think the piece that we're going to remove is around like 19, 20 years old. And Kiwani's is donating, which is awesome. This is really going to help our budget. They are going to donate a really terrific piece of play equipment that is geared towards um, musical instruments and it's really cool. It's different. We don't have it at Lair. We don't have it at Artesian. So it's going to be one new feature that if someone's looking for something a little different, they maybe have little kids and they're worried about them climbing super high, it's going to give them a great park, which is going to be in the you know, middle of Lake Bluff um, to enjoy. So we're working on that. And um, we'll be holding a public hearing, uh, what we call a public forum, so the neighbors have a chance. And I know it's in your, your neighborhood, so that might, we'll let you know the date of that. And uh, but 15, 50, they're going to donate between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars. So uh, it takes a hundred thousand dollars off our capital budget. Yeah, we're getting there. And then well, because we we originally planned for a brand new playground for that specific replacement, so now we don't have to replace it. And they're willing to put smaller pieces of equipment that are that Smaller pieces and maybe a couple more pieces will be done. So it, it could be a thing. I think it will be. Okay. And then the other um, information is Lobola would like to host a fundraiser Saturday, June 22nd at North Beach. And they're going to use, in you know, Obasi, they're going to have like 10, 15 high cut tables, and they just want to make sure that we're all good with um, this decision. Is there anything else you want to add to this decision? But they will also have a band. We, you know, it's kind of a rarity, but we do occasionally have a couple of uh, people who rent out, whether it's North or South Beach, that uh, a party might have a band. They, anybody can do that. We just don't get too many requests. The reason why we're bringing it to your attention is there's been a lot of discussion on noise and parking and we wanted the board to feel supportive or concerns, address concerns, and they're taking up some of the beach too. So during are they renting the facility or are they asking us to donate? So uh, they're an affiliate and an affiliate gets one free rental. So I'd have to look to see if that's their free rental for the year. If it's not, then they pay for it. Um, they've always done the events the, on the summer solstice, solstice and the winter one, but they not to this extent. Usually it's about 50 to 75 people. It's a bonfire. It's the only time we ever have a bonfire on the beach, um, but it's a controlled burn by them. 
we've never had a problem with Lavola ever renting uh, the beach out. I talked to a local resident who is, sits on their board and he's trying to do something different because they're just not raising enough funds. So he wants to ask permission in order to have a larger volume of potential people down there that will help fundraise for them. It wasn't an affiliate actually. How many people are well, he's not sure, but he's thinking on the high end, 100. A uh, typical party can go up to 70 in a shelter. Six to 930. Did they get a liquor license? What's that? Did they get a liquor license separate from the permit? Yes, they, and they've always done that, too. Yeah. They've always had that. And Inabasi is going to be serving. And then they're talking about possibly... Uh, Prairie Espresso being down there as well. Are we promoting it in any way? Are we like, involved in the promotion? We're not involved in the promotion. And this just came about like within the last few days. So we, they always have this event, but now somebody wants to take it up. Okay? And, and it gives some historical perspective, even the, the commissioners have been here for a while. The BOLA, as part of the budget, we do uh, uh, have a line item thousand or fifteen hundred dollars because they do a lot of maintaining of the wetlands and bell and that's probably would cost us about another five to ten thousand dollars we had to bring on additional staff those are difficult areas with buckthorn and a couple of those and so that's why they're an affiliate and uh, so they do quite a bit for us down at the beach as well too so i just wanted to have the book so so, I don't know if anybody has any. All right, I'll do my own. They normally do. They normally do. I guess it's a general concern or that. Well, I think it's a great idea, and I think it's, we should support them. Yeah. You know, it'll be awesome. And we've had bands down there before. It's just going to be, I mean, that will attract a lot of lake walkers, too. So it'll be a great, I mean, hopefully we can. Um, yeah, issue for parking, if they're mostly residents, they should have a village parking sticker. So the only thing might be is if they get ticketed or not. Uh, but uh, we, we, we give out how many passes? Yeah, I was just going to say that. So they, they actually uh, requested the full amount of passes that they get. And this year, the change was, before it was unlimited, and now it's only 25. So they only can get up to 25 passes, after which they have to pay for each additional pass, which is $15. So they're not looking to add any additional at this point. So that on the application, they filled out for 25. Great. Everyone okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, with Corey's uh, committee, next, uh, the next regular board meeting is a really big board meeting because we have eight engineer who will be presenting their report on the uh, erosion control study that they put together. So they, uh, the Parks and Beach Committee will be meeting in the next two weeks. George Russell and I have been working on a report with AECOM to the finest details. That's a really big report. The board has invested a lot of money in that report. It's close to $60,000 and will set the path of where the board wants to go. Um, at that meeting now, it's, we're not looking for a recommendation. Usually what we do is we ask to just accept the report, not to approve the report. So from there, then, you, it's not necessarily approval of the items. It's just accepting that the report is in their hands. Nikki, do you want to just give I'm a little bit? I'm not official yet. You do this one. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, facilities and programs. We we met a week ago, a week and a half ago. Um, the main focus was rackets. Thanks to Paul and, and uh, a whole group of people got together to explore different options with uh, racket sports. Um, they came back with a few different recommendations that, that we are considering as a committee. Nothing really to present yet to the board. Um, one of those is a potential uh, independent contractor arrangement, um, which
which a few other park districts have used um, in the Chicagoland area, where instead of having your own pro contract out with a local tennis facility, could also be an individual, a group of individuals, have them run the racket programs for you. Um, I think the committee felt, or the, the task force, whatever we're calling them, felt that um, tennis and paddle need to be looked at. The feeling was that pickleball was already under an independent contractor arrangement and seems to be working fine on its own. Um, so really it's tennis and racket that we're exploring. Um, we gave Ron direction to reach out to some local facilities to gauge interest. There are a few that are interested, and now we need to talk about what that next step looks like. Um, maybe an RFP, maybe some more formal submission of a plan. Um, in the meantime, we asked Ron to take a look at uh, increasing fees. There's a concern that we're not gonna make budget this year because we had budgeted for a decrease in racket expenses, so we're looking at um, some expense cuts as well as maybe a, a fee increase on the paddle side, but we're sensitive, paddle seems to be kind of expensive already, so we're sensitive to bumping that up too much, um, but maybe through a combination of things we can, we can reach budget as well as put a good plan in place. Um, we hope to meet early June, yeah, um, maybe have something by the end of June to come back to the board with. Uh, talk about fitness briefly. Fitness is really on a good track right now. A lot of changes that we implemented last year are really paying dividends right now. So uh, membership is up, usage is up, revenue is up, expenses are down. Really good story to tell. So um, it's doing much better than breaking even from an operational standpoint. Um, and is even covering some of its own uh, uh, debt and capital expenses. So a nice story there. Um, that's, that's it, right? That's it. Yeah. Did we, we don't want to say much about the possible resurfacing, but that might come to a point. So yeah, one of the recommendations out of the group is uh, a resurfacing of the courts over here at Blair um, that I've walked on today. They're in really miserable shape. Um, I don't know that they get used for tennis at all, but I think Pickle uses those quite a bit. Um, <laughs> The recommendation that, that we, or I guess decision that we made was we can't just isolate a capital expense. We really need to put that into the larger uh, capital improvement plan that, that Franz and Paul and others are going to be looking at. So um, we, we said that we would consider it, but again, we need to look at it in light of all the other capital needs that we have and, and prioritize things appropriately. And we don't use them for we right. do for tennis, after oh, school tennis, yeah. summer so tennis, elementary when walk he over. walks them over from the yeah. school. And but pickleball could also be played at the Artesian. At Artesian, correct. Right. But but there are, could well, their, the recommendation yeah, the right. was not to go over to Artesian because there are five tennis courts, and so you'd have to restrike those. And, those and those are recently done. So I think here is a good suggestion because tennis, here is really big after school, think fall and spring. And then summer, not as much. I mean, most people will usually go to Artesian. And the nice thing about pickleball being here is that if it's raining, maybe they could use the gym and they drive here and it's one facility. So it would make sense if we could do it here. And I mean, pickleball is really growing. I think they say it's the fastest growing sport yeah. right now. Yeah. It is huge. The only problem with pickleball is that everyone's really not used to paying very much to play pickleball. I mean, it's $5 and sometimes free to play. And uh, for example, there's some new courts in Glenbrook, and the woman told me that they were charging $12 to play, and I mentioned it to some pickleball players. I'm like, that is so much money. But I think, and Katie can comment maybe, but people are paying for lessons.
that's that's good for you. Come back. You don't get that night time. Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendrick? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. President Mossler? Yes. Um, consent agenda. So, yeah, can I explain this? Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you the best of my ability, which is we get to look at every single check and every invoice that's been paid on a monthly basis. Um, this started well before I was on the board. It doesn't take you much time to do this, right? You just no. want to report. No. And then if you see anything that you're curious about or it seems out of whack or there's a large item and you're not sure what that is, just raise a question. Um, so there will usually be a couple of them in here that I'll, I'll look at. One of them, um, there was the item in here about the, the Go fun run thing. Um, there were three separate payments made, like a 450, a 400, and an 800 um, for a, a marketing promotion company. So is that a, a pass-through of some kind, or are we paying it for the friends? And it's a, it's a pass we, we have a, a marketing individual that helps us with these, so otherwise we wouldn't have anybody that I just didn't think those things raised all that much money, so I was just concerned that I saw fifteen hundred dollars going out, and I wasn't it Yeah, some of it is four, a, five, some of it is expensed back to the foundation, so they have a budget for the color run. Okay. So what happens though is our internal, and that we invoice them. It's kind of different expenses we've done that with the foundation. So the foundation does the they add that. Right. And you still feel good that that's going to make, I don't remember what it was, five grand or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I could tell you where we're at with the yeah, runners, yeah. runners and walkers. We're at 150 right now, uh, which 300 is our cap. We were nowhere even near this with 5K. Right. Uh, we received probably close to $3,000 in sponsorship. Uh, we continue to get, I had, I just received another $300 today. So we, they continue to, what the foundation does, they're doing a great job really trying to promote this and we're seeing donations we haven't seen. Right? They're, they're doing a great job of keeping people in the so it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So the fee is, is, is going to come back though, the money that's spent on that administration fee, because I well, that. But the treasurer of the trust puts everything together, Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of things. This is going to be. This is going to be social. It's the same day as that. The 
event down at the beach just during the day. That's a good day. Man. Yeah, it's only yeah. the summer and beach. Sure. Wash up all your colors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jump in the beach. Ron, how about the, um, I'm Jay sorry. Go no. no. ahead. Liquor license in here. That's the liquor license I'm assuming for golf visions? No. 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 No, that's that's our own. So if, if we ever want to do any special events, we need to keep that liquor license going. We've always had that. Right? Yeah, we've always had that. And what about the golf carts alone? I thought they were taking that over. They will. Part of the but we part of the agreement is that we we pay it because the bank didn't want to switch all that over or the currency form, and they pay us and back. they reimburse us back. Okay. That was oh, and who's dude solutions? Is our that was asking for that. <laughs> that's that was also seventy five hundred dollars. Yeah, that's our work order system that we budgeted for. So uh, you want to give a quick no? Uh, how how significant and important that's been for us? We no. know. Okay. Thank you. Though. And then that, that auditorium rental. That Well, seventeen fifty is only half, so okay. that's not that's not the full. That so was just a down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the full price was twice then. Or? Uh, well, seventeen fifty. Carmel or Lake Forest? Lake Forest was closer to five thousand. Lake Forest charges five thousand. Right, and that's one of the things I really want us to work on because they can yeah, only know someone. Well, yeah. But you already left. So I, I sent I sent a letter over to the school superintendent a couple of weeks ago. So that was back here. So I'll be contacted. So what is the price you guys pay for the car map? It is like thirty five dollars. Okay. And then originally you paid five thousand for the late board. Yeah, board? right around five thousand, maybe a little bit more than that. Okay. But Emily, this is one thing you should know. Lake Forest rep is not paid. Is that true, Jim? We don't know if they pay if they get a discount or if they don't pay. But so they do I think because sort of we are our kids go to Lake Forest. It's That's whatever true. they get, we should get. And I've said this for years, and um, I think that it's something. The Lake Forest Dance Academy. Isn't yeah. It? Well, we either we either think they get a discount, but I've heard in the past they did not pay. And if it, it maybe it's changed, but in the past they haven't paid and we're paying, which isn't right. That's your first job. After no. your boot camp. After your boot camp. Uh finance. Do you want to oh, you have to we have to ex accept but then we'll be So to. for the consent agenda I'll be abstaining from this item due to my relationship with the vendor on the list. So, so we have to consent stuff. Okay. So we have to accept Oh we have to accept it and approve. Okay. So we need a motion to accept all five of those schedules course. Okay. Do I need to read the no. update? Okay. So move to second. 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 We'll roll call on that. Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. And President Mossberger. Yes. And so the reason, just so you know, if you have any, you have a choice to pull some of out, pull certain bills out if you want during that, except if you don't want to vote at all or don't want to be a part of the discussion. So uh, I'll try to watch for things like that. Um, so that's usually the time there to decide that um, you just don't want to vote at all. Okay. So anyway, so that's why we still need a motion. No, not in the all votes. Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. 
Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Okay. And President Mossberg? Yes. All right, now on to finance. So Bob Novak put together at least uh, knowing that we'll be working on the reports, but on page 56 is the uh, just the general guidelines on where we're at right now. So he'll be coming like every other month, quarterly, to report to the board. And then I'll be at finance committee meetings. But in the end, I don't want to repeat what he has to say, but uh, it's, it's a kind of independent review on how he thinks we're doing today. I know what he put together. That's what he just put covered. Page. Yeah, I asked him to put that together. Okay. okay. I have a question about option four. Go ahead. This, uh, the second bullet point there we benefit from staff electing lower levels of benefits, health insurance. So we budgeted for family coverage and then maybe they took single or, or couple coverage. Okay. So we budgeted. But there was no. I mean, pressure. Oh, well, no, no, no. They, they just decided that it's they, we, just how we budgeted. Okay. We just budgeted for those positions to make sure that we didn't want to budget for single coverage and then all of a sudden they elect family and then it's costing us. Then our budget's out of whack. So we try to, everyone we budget for family. Just about most of them. But so far, so good. Knock on wood. This is a really nice summary yeah, 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 yeah. In, in place of Those. what's in these boxes. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what uh, uh, Mr. Sarah brought up. Don't even do these. <laughs> you don't want it for the June report? Then. No. <laughs> I think it would be great if you just did this like one it. page or yeah, we like it. followed by this. Okay. Followed by then wrap and fitness or whatever else is included. Well, yeah, I think that's much easier to follow. I agree. Yeah. I love the bullet points. Right. The bullet points the summary. It's awesome. Yep. The only one of the questions I did have though is this whole question of the racket sub fund. And we during the month of April management adjusted the racket sub fund to properly reflect the budget distribution. Rather than spread the distribution out evenly over the year. Yeah, so the way the budget, because you have to budget monthly, the original budget doesn't change the number, but the budget was all the way till September and racket sports ended March. So why spread it all the way through September so that we can accurately reflect where we're at in the season? I don't know what you just said. Racket sports. Right, racket sports. So paddle tennis. So paddle ended in March. So paddle end would, the way we budgeted was that, um, how you put it in the system was through September. So if you collect $100,000, it was allocated evenly through September. We were saying paddle tennis ends through, basically ends in March. So we ended it in March. So, um, so it's an accounting change. It's a accounting change. No impact on the overall budget. No, it actually yeah. helps us reflect how we're doing. I'm, just, I'm <laughs> just concerned if we're, so if fifty one thousand dollars favorable, does that mean that we're going to be fifty one thousand unfavorable in the next four months? Like what happens in June when we had a budget and then nothing comes in? Because the budget will show. That will show zero. It's still the full same amount. So by September or whenever it had been spread out before, then you're going to be at zero by that point. You're going to show that you're ahead until you get to September and then you're going to be right back on the budget. Okay, so we're more so aligning. Aligning. Right? But it's not, re it's immaterial Correct. overall. That, so we're not really favorable by 51,000. Right. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. And, and when we say we are 243,000 better than budget, does that include the 40, the 51 of the sub fund that is kind of not real, real? 
comes in as the year goes, but because golf now has been leased out, we don't have any membership collections from the golf facility. So we right now are at about the lowest cash balance that we will be at for the year. We'll start seeing revenue come in from taxes when late we just gave thirty four thousand last week, but we'll get June one is better than Vegas. Okay. And we've got all the camps and things starting, so you know, we'll be in much better position, you know, by say July or August, and then we get that second slug from Lake County Collector, you know, late in September or so. Um, so there's a lot of noise in here, but if you just simplify it and think, okay, half your budget comes from the tax receipts, half comes from um, program revenue. But your expenses are pretty stable the whole year long. So um, during you know the period from January to May, we're definitely draining cash reserves. Those then get built up as the year goes by. I, I had one question about the um, you know I've been when I've been at the meetings earlier, and there's been this talk that two positions were filled later in the budget. Have those been filled now? One hasn't, uh, the other hasn't as well. So, and it's, it hurts us. I mean, I, I, it's fine, you save money, but it helps it hurts. hurts. Yeah, it helps it, it hurts. hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is, if there is a year, probably it's good for us to see it, but I will tell you they've been, I mean, we're behind in the parks department, that was one of them. And then it's still our facility, and Katie's doing a great job pitching in in the fitness center. But uh, it's just good to have some direction. You know. um, so, yeah. So we get how many clients do I have? We're going to which one of these right now? The facility services. So, yeah, I think that's well said. It helps and it hurts. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. But financially, it's sustainable long term. We're very well. So yeah. thank you, and the team, you know. Yeah. yeah. This is very reassuring, <laughs> they, you know, compared to last year. Mm -hmm. So already, you know. And don't hesitate to ask questions. Because a lot of times you guys ask questions and we learn from something that you might, you know, find, mm -hmm. like numbers and Chris. I didn't realize that color wrong, and I think that's been interesting to hear. So ask away, there's really no stupid questions. If there is, but ask them all. Don't <laughs> All right. All right. Do we need to? Do we need to? We don't want to just do it right? Uh, we just do a motion to accept the report. I will put forward the motion to accept the financials for as presented. As presented. Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Batera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. President Mossman? Yes. So purchase cards. I've, I've talked around about this one before, and I think at some point we're going to change how this is presented. But um, certain employees have purchase cards that they use to buy equipment. So Dana Hansen is an example would have a purchase card so she can buy supplies for the preschool. So Ron presents this um, and says, as you can see in analysis, analysis and consideration, in April of 2019, it was this number versus what it was in April of, of 2018. To me, that's somewhat meaningless. All I want is for Ron to say to us that I have reviewed the purchase card transactions, and I'm comfortable that the cards have been used appropriately. That's all I really look for in this. I don't even look through all of these because it doesn't, doesn't mean anything to me. So at some point, we might change that. This is the way he's always done it, so it continues to be presented this way. Um, so we just need a uh, motion to ratify um, these payments. Can I ask for a motion? Yeah, so they're submitted to the uh, uh, media supervisor and then the department head submitted to me and I review them and sign off on them. Then it goes to two through two people in the business department. One is uh, Amy Cash, who reviews them and then turns the whole guard accounts payable, who reviews them as well. So um, it's a good check and balance. It's a good yes. check and balance. Yeah. And then it's just drawn into here too. It 
comparison to things just that are not just as a comparison. It helps us determine that have, have we been spending a lot, where are we at, and I'll know, you know, people I think are understanding, watch your expenses, watch your expenses. If you don't need it, you don't need to go through it. Um, but this is on file for transparency purposes that people can see what I'm purchasing or anybody else. So that's why we do it there. But the number to President Mossberg, the number is meaningless in general. It just probably tells me, okay, we've been holding tight. You know, but it's more about the actual approval of this. And right. you can ask the yeah, know that you were that I Do they have a budget though? Yeah, everything has to fall within the yeah. budget. Okay. So they're accountable for the budget. And unlike what was going on in Lake County, none of the Ford members have <laughs> All right. Credit card? No. Yep. And, they, and they do have limits, too. So they yeah, have to write it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if it's unbudgeted, then we talk about it, and then we have to sign off or say no, yes, but for reasons why. So we need a motion to ratify uh, the purchase card payment of $27,000. Second. Second. Okay. Roll call. We need a roll call. Commissioner yes. Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. President Mossberger? Yes. All right. You did this. Board policy manual. So th this is just a change so that we can have three board members on a certain committee. Right. Okay, that's all that's in here. Um, and you'll see in a second, we can explain why um, we're doing that. But if someone can uh, move to approve that change. I move that to approve the change. You second it? Okay. Roll call, Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. President Yes. All right. Board committee appointments. Um, hopefully this is not news to many of you. Um, Franz and I met
board, I think it's uh, typical to have me and then Corey be a part of that I mean, a couple of times. And Triport is school, village, and parks getting together every once in a while. Um, Friends of the Park is kind of a natural one for you to continue as a liaison, and then um, Emily would thought you could, could back her up to the extent that she can't be. Um, can't make those games. So this says me, Franz, and Corey request approval. Why is that? Uh, <coughs> because we were the only one on the board at that point. Because you okay. talk about it. So th these are recommendations. Does anyone want to talk about anything in there? Does anyone object to anything that's in there? If not, let's we'll go ahead and uh, someone make a motion to uh, approve those appointments. Well, or, yeah, I have one more question though. Yeah. Until we get a spot for the citizen committee member for facilities, mm -hmm. I was thinking, Scott, if he'd be willing to do it, maybe we could add him until we find somebody. Scott's already on finance. I don't think he's using That's a lot. Is it too much? We have a lot of meetings right now. I don't know. Oh, okay. he's welcome. Yeah. I'm trying to get the calendar. <laughs> 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 trying to get you up and off. running, Scott. <laughs> okay. But he can't be on YouTube right now. No. I can help him work with, I don't know if my, my voice is, but I, I can help work with Nikki a little bit and try to maybe end to learn a little bit about okay. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. That's a great way to help. Now we can make a motion. Yes. Okay. We'll have. Excellent. So I move that the appointments as discussed be accepted and ratified from May 20th, 2019 to May 19th, 2020. I'll second. Roll call. Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. President Mossberger? Yes. All right, so Franz put this together, and I uh, agreed. Um, I thought it was a, a great idea to give the new board members, new committee members, some direction um, on goals and objectives for each of the committees. So maybe we could have the committee heads just go down the list. Do you want to start sure. once with finance? Yep. So just talk about the, you know several things. I think there are two or three. Right. So maybe more on those. Probably three programs. big ones. Yeah. Um, from the finance administration future planning committee. And the first one is to achieve the budget. Um, Create comprehensive monthly financial tools and reports to track performance and implement the cost of services recommendations and solidify the financial, the five year financial forecast. So there's a lot in there. Uh, <laughs> more than one, I guess. Um, but things are kind of in the works on, on a few of those. When you made a lot of progress in the budget this last year, going through that. Right. So. Um, so maintaining that and yep. fine tuning, improving, there's still some gaps um, on, on a few of these things. Um, the second would be to complete the five year capital improvement plan and prioritize needs and identify potentially assets to divest if needed, you know, based on the needs of the, for, you know, based on the forecast and what we think, you know, we'll be able to put in from a capital uh, budget perspective, but just kind of really looking at you know the needs across the the park district from a capital perspective and prioritizing those and seeing you know how much of those are absolutely necessary and then figuring out a way to you know to get to them. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the third one is just to develop and track the grant uh, application opportunities, uh, projects and timelines. So grant applications with the new you know, with the new governor, uh, grant, grants are becoming more available. I know Ron's already like taking a leadership role on this one, um, and we've already submitted something. So, you know, very quick turnaround on Ron's part. Um, but we want to be able to track these opportunities, follow up with them, understand, you know, what comes up, because uh, we expect more grant opportunities to come around, and we know that this year we've benefited from a $350,000 grant. So, 
um, being able to um, stay on top of that uh, is certainly something we want to do. Uh, and I think we've been more reactive in that category. I think we need to really search uh, those out. You know, the, the dollar for the dollar should be
instead of just Ron deciding what to do with me, it's where you want to go, and my job is to fulfill your goals. So I think, uh, I don't think it feels too much, it feels just right. So you start, you start, there's always going to be things we add. So um, the only thing I would say is if we're doing analysis, financial analysis, it's kind of where Chris was saying we have Bob two days a week. Right. And that's our challenge is he gets filled up pretty quickly. So we'll just have to balance all that out. And we will. I'm not too worried about that. So, um, but I, I feel good about these. Uh, it feels almost like as you're going to create your strategic plan next year, you, you have it again. You don't spend a whole lot of money. You don't yep. have to bring it up to silicate. That's right. <laughs> Keep it simple. Yeah. Um, we do want the you know the committees to report on these at every board meeting. So that's going to be a little bit different from when you prepare these packets. Okay. You know, we're going to have to send you, you know, kind of updates to so, you know where are we at, what progress are we making, what status updates yep. kind of thing. Do you think that just for the sake of the new um, board members, do you want to talk a little bit about the Northwest Sanitary, how it kind of goes along with our beach and what we're going to do in the future? Not good. Okay. David? Sorry. We're going to have a beach intensive discussion next meeting, so let's okay. pull the beach stuff in a minute. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, but it's an important piece. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay, Ron? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. This meeting is going obviously longer than an hour. I'm going to try and run the meetings rather quickly so we get done in about an hour, if at all possible. Um, I get fidgety after that time frame, so I'm sure everyone else is too. Um, one reason that I think we can do that and hold of that is we're trying to push more work into the committees and get more done during the month so that when we get together as a larger group, there can be more presentations from the committees less things for the board to have to decision on and have long discussions about. So um, I think that'll continue you know, going forward. Well, a lot of good work is going to be done. Um, all right, Ron, what do we got next? Is uh, check, oh, signers. check signers. This is just so uh, right now we want to be able to get Jim on there so we're not calling commissioners and taking off work or pouring your products when we catch you last minute. So just need approval. If for some reason you don't want to sign the check, we need two signatures at all times. So um, if you let me know now, but uh, it's helpful because you go on vacations and things like that, and sometimes we have large checks that the gym can't sign. So. Okay. All right, I move to authorize Commissioner Steeler, Greenfield Lane, Walsh, and Superintendent Lakeman to fill out the required paperwork to become check signers for a check process through Lake Forest Bank and Trust and the Park District. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Beeler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. President Mossberg. Yes. Thank you. All right, before we jump into the next one, item 7E, I need to recuse myself. Um, I have a relationship with a subcontractor of the energy broker. So I'm going to leave the room, and Corey, you're going to leave the discussion. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I have <laughs> <laughs> no idea about this other So we have, um, we have two contracts. We have a natural gas and we have electric, and basically you get this thing to make law that says you can opt out or you can, and you have a, a certain supplier. We still have comment that this is the supplier of uh, electric. And so we've been in the past using uh, uh, lower electric, and I, I think after this last budget last year, we were trying to turn over everything. I don't care if it's $50 to $5 to $500. Let's try to find more money. So um, I had a, a connection uh, from last year and said, uh, hey, what do you do with your energy? And so I discussed that. And so I basically had two brokers. They came in at the same time, one day apart with their proposals. So I met with them independently. 
and they provided their proposals, a fixed rate, and uh, Bob and I feel the 24 month is the most advantageous. Doesn't it's going to increase from future budgets, but slightly. But the the best proposal moving forward is energy connection by $600 per year um, and versus lower electric. We talked with lower electric today. You absolutely understand. That's how business works. And at $600, it's $600. So we felt that the 24 month, um, and, and we've had lower electric in here a year and a half ago, and it was an hour long discussion on energy and supply rates and rates, it's hard to catch them, when's the right time, when's, you know, we could be dancing yeah. every month to figure out what, what's the right day. So usually these companies will call and say, hey, you're in a pretty good position right now, um, do you want to lock in now? It doesn't mean we're switching, but do we want to lock in the rate? It's a guesstimate whether where prices are going to go, you know, the commodities, market, but uh, they've been very favorable for us last year in these lower electric. What I do like about Energy Connection is they will take a look at our peak months. And uh, so, for example, they may say, hey, ComEd really charges you or our free point energy during these hours. Can you get the lights off? Can you do something different with your air conditioning units? Can you move them to 75 degrees during that time? And they said there's significant savings that way. That was the first I've heard of that, so I've heard that before. So I thought I like that. I like people when they come up with new ideas. So um, uh, I feel this is uh, this really does work for us. Have you gotten all the all the light bulbs changes here? We have all not. Right? The, the they came to my house. Yeah. <laughs> Changed all my light bulbs for free. Right? Well, well, what happens? They don't tend to do that with us. We usually have to pay an upfront cost. Oh, yeah. And so I've just told people, we get all those companies in here and they'll say, we'll do this, we'll do that. Well, we have to pay an upfront cost and I've just said our budgets don't, can't handle that right now. Even though they say they'll cover itself over time, you know, to put out that cash flow, I, I don't think it's necessary at this time. Is there any kind of a difference in uptime or service or anything with any of these? Like is it like you talk to people that have used the other ones? No, no, I mean, Lower Electric could, let's see if I'm answering your question. Basically, they get proposals from five companies, and they're a fixed rate. So, um, so I don't know if I'm fully, I don't know if I understand. It's our service, the power outage, you know, like our air. Like oh, that's usually still kind of, it's still more, this is more the supply piece okay. of it, so we still have the delivery piece from Combat. So, okay. Okay. Uh, we still pay for Got it. the service. Got it. So uh, that doesn't go away. Okay. And then did you go back to lower electric after you had a better price and ask them to match it? Yeah, no, what I said to them, they originally came with a proposal that was higher about a week prior. And then by the time I worked with Energy Connection, they had one and then I said, oh, tighten it up. And two days before the board meeting, or it was the Monday and Tuesday before the the packets go out, give me your best proposal at that point in time. So they went one round and then I asked them again. Okay, so but I did not go back to lower electric at that time. Because I usually tell them, give us your best. You have your chance. So I don't think the service is going to change. I feel really good about it. And when I talked to lower electric, he said he wouldn't have been able to beat that price. When I talked to him today, he was surprised. He thought for sure. And we have opportunities to potentially have more savings with this consultant. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, the, the two year term, is that, I mean, I saw that the rate with energy connection is the same whether it's 24, 36 months. But, it, I mean, what what's the thinking in terms of taking it out to three years, to locking that rate in for three years? Yeah, rather than two. We just saw, we didn't see the advantages with the third year. Um, <coughs> I think we go down to about a thousand dollars savings versus twelve hundred in the, the two years. So it, it's a it's a guesstimate, but we 
we've been that's all I mean. And we've been really staying mean. mostly with the two years. Um, doesn't mean it's right. So it's really the board's call. Uh, just because it seems like always the two year uh, seems to be working for us. It gives us more flexibility too. So uh, just a somewhat related question. Has anything been ever done about alternative sources and getting solar panels or? We haven't spent that much time on that. Uh, and these companies do look at that. I have a feeling we can, we can continue to look at that. We haven't spent a lot of time on it, actually. So. I mean, I know there are also systems. I don't know how present they are here. But there are systems that will actually absorb your excess energy at low times, and then you pick it up at, at high times, at peak times, where you can, you know, offset the two. Um, and I don't know if they're involved in programs like that. Well, I think you might ask them about that. We just haven't invested the time in to that, but we glad to. Yeah, I know Paul brought up the 36 month. Um, it's optional whether you want to do the 24 or 36. Well, I was the county board case where I'm happy when I walked in for three years. So, I, just because they're new, we're outside to the school. That's, you know, what energy rates you're going to do. That's right. There you go. Oh, man, you have some. gives us flexibility of doing what we want. Then we get to read that. Right? So. What do you think, Paul? 24 to 36. Again, you don't you know what, what the trend in energy costs is going to be. What and happens is, do we know? Are we like down or are we on the way up? Well, these are these rates are yeah these rates are a little bit higher. They they felt that this energy connection felt that where we're at today or these rates are going to be very good rates for the future. That's again. So I don't have a personal call. I mean I don't know the quality of the supplier is such a big deal. They're they're buying the electricity right. in the That's same place right. and it's going over the comment line. Yeah. Okay. So there's really. It's just a price. It's just a price. And you have to just anticipate our prices going up and the price is Right. Up. And you say prices are probably going to go up. We know we're going to need electricity for three years, so that's not good. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so I, I just wonder if these prices are higher than what they have been. I mean, it's, it's nice to say that energy costs will go down in two years because of some factor, but, you know, I don't, I don't know about the electricity market so much. I know the airlines, for example, have locked in their fuel prices for a longer period, made a lot more money than the airlines who didn't lock in their fuel prices. So, I like it, it may make sense. You know, and then the question will lower electric come back in two years and offer a much lower price, but they had the opportunity now to do it. And they haven't done it, so. I really do not know a lot about the topic. So someone needs to make a motion. Um, yeah, I'm comfortable. Jennifer, what do you think? Can we take a look at the rates? You can, but the rates make a lot. Okay. Locking in. All right. I don't think it's a major decision whether you go 24 or 30. Okay. Well, I want to make a decision. I think you can hurt yourself by waiting. I'm with Paul feeling good about this. I'm okay switching. Go ahead and make 
So whatever the motion is, the state in the back for 36 months. All right, move to authorize the executive director to move with energy connection with attorney review and sign a contract with Free Point Energy Solutions LLC for a period of 36 months beginning October 1st, specifically for electric. Paul, you want to second that? I will second that. Did, did we want Jennifer to review? Well, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be. We still have attorney review. Yeah, 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 our, our attorney reviews that. So, yeah. because you definitely want our, these to be contracts. You're going to have termination fees, you're going to have other sorts of things. And again, I don't know if this is better than the Commissioner Bieler? Yes. Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Do you want to let her second that?